If the situation of refugees is already concerning, the Hungarian government seems willing to make it even more difficult. In 2018, the Hungarian leader Viktor Orban adopted a legislative package called Stop Soros or Anti Soros that, among others, criminalized the activities of human rights defenders. Asylum applications became a near impossible mission. My name is Krishna Kifuri and today we are starting a new series of interviews with human rights researchers. Today we are talking about the anti-Soros package, the harassment of human rights defenders and the decision of the CJEU declaring that this package was incompatible with EU law. Our very first guest is Idu Adinoglu. She is a human rights researcher, a project developer and a lawyer specializing in the rule of law. Watch now. Idil, welcome, and please feel free to introduce yourself. Um, hello, Kristina. Thank you for having me. Um, according to the information we have at hand, we know that people uh, coming people coming to Europe to seek asylum are running away from their home countries because of the uh, the violence they face there. Uh, these violence can uh, encompass wars, armed conflicts, and these sorts of big social uh, problems, but also um, more more of uh, or, or problems that comes from uh, gender based violence uh, or being an LGBTI and facing persecution. So w when it comes to, to 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 these people who are seeking asylum in Europe, we must first consider the fact that they are running away from life threatening situations. Yeah, it, the the number of 2021, we we have information about that, and it's uh, the people who have lost their lives in the Mediterranean Sea is almost uh, is over than 1,000. So as you have said, um, t well, just maybe simply put the fact that if you are facing death, you must be having a worse condition in your home country if you are uh going to this path and as you said it's not um you 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 take this road probably i mean you must know that you will not go back you you cannot go back so there is no there isn't a safe place for you to go back uh, like, uh, i mentioned in the beginning of this episode is that the anti soros law we are going to get there right away but uh, one of the targets of the anti soro package is uh, human rights defenders. So it's interesting to see how a government is trying to reach asylum seekers through human rights defenders. So actually, like an expert of this topic, what human rights advocacy does, what uh, human rights defenders have been doing and what have been their results? Uh, human rights defenders is a is a actually a terminology that has been used by the United Nations. But who are we actually talking about? Is lawyers, journalists, and and civil society professionals who are striving, who are who are aiming to promote and protect people's rights, the, their exercise of their rights. So in a way, they are they can be considered as facilitators of people's uh, ac people's access to their rights and also the 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 existence of human rights framework uh, in the first place. So they are human rights actors, and uh, with the rise of these populist and uh, autocratic uh, leaders, we 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 see that attacking and targeting uh, human rights defenders becoming more and more uh, prominent and more and more. Um, Maybe, maybe through more and more sophisticated ways. And criminalization and stigmatization is one of them. Nevertheless, we must also mention that it is not only populist leaders or it is not only countries that are labeled as uh, autocracies, but we also see targeting and, and stigmatizing and criminalizing human rights defenders uh, in different countries, for example, in Greece. And um, what these people are doing, actually, like I said, they are supporting people 
to, to exercise their lives, their rights, which in the case of uh, asylum seekers, they help asylum seekers to, uh, to seek asylum, to learn the procedures, to, to, efficient, to effectively use their rights. From the early 2020s, um, Hungarian migrants' rights defenders are uh, monitoring the borders of Hungary. They are, meanwhile, they're providing legal assistance to them. They also monitor the conditions that they are living in. I mean, these people, as we have talked in the beginning, they come from very fragile conditions and their their access to 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 water and food and proper and uh, proper accommodation is not is not given they, they, they need some kind of support uh, to, to stay alive in the end their adequate conditions is also um, guaranteed by the international and uh, international human rights humanitarian law and also european law so what they do is they they are they are the watchdogs to monitor if the governments are doing their jobs <laughs> in uh, basically so if they see that governments are not doing their jobs they uh, they alarm the international community they they share their findings and they put the spot they put the governments on the spotlight which eventually makes them the spotlight of the government <laughs> because then mm -hmm. they become the target uh, if the government is not hoping to uh, to help them, to help asylum seekers, and in the case of Hungary, we know that they are not, they are considering them as a threat. <laughs> so um, this is maybe the actions, uh, the, the case of human rights defenders. And when we come to examples, if we need to exemplify their, their work, uh, we must maybe we, we can uh, refer to the the important cases that uh, were lodged to, lodged to the European Courts of Human Rights and the CGEU uh, which uh, and uh, using using the lack the legal mechanisms that are available it's yes, not exactly by legal or uh, under law well uh, the the way that human rights defenders work is mostly using the existing uh, legal uh, tools. They 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 try their advocacy uh, work uh, most is is mostly consists of uh, international human rights mechanisms. So um, thanks to the Hungarian uh, migrant rights defenders. There, there is a there are very important cases now and very important judgments. Which uh, one of actually their work eventually uh, led the Hungarian government to shut down two transit zones, which were the focus or which were the focal point of uh, severe violations. And their thanks to their support to the applicants uh, who. Uh, who stayed more than uh, 400 and 600 days in transit zones? Uh, they they managed to 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 to, to support them to uh, to lead their case to make their case in the CGEU. So yeah, basically they are holding these uh, these governments accountable, and they they make sure that. The, the rights of asylum seekers who are probably the most vulnerable people that we, uh, the planet Earth is uh, hosting right now, among one of the most vulnerable, they're making their voice and claims to, to, to be delivered uh, to international human rights mechanisms. So it is important what they do, and hence it is important to protect them to, while they're doing their job. And then, uh, not surprisingly, this this piece of law, the anti-sorrows anti package, reached the dockets of the CJEU, and uh, the final decision was uh, released in November 2021, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, confirming that the anti-sorrows package was problematic and did not comply with EU law. So what were the main findings of the CJEU ruling? The only part that I consider could be more improved is the, mm -hmm. the, the, the side of the, the human rights defenders whose, whose 
legitimate work has been criminalized. So this is your main criticism on this topic. The, the CJU could be more incisive and could reinforce the work of human rights defenders. Yes, because the right to defend the human right is part of, it, it is not stipulated like that, but the freedom of uh, expression and organization constitutes the right to defend the human right. And the, the, the EU law requires CGU, the Strasbourg, uh, the Luxembourg Court, to consider um, international uh, human rights law while applying uh while well, concluding its judgments and the cgu could have point out to this fact as well while considering the rights of asylum seekers rightfully um i, I also i also think it is important to do this in a, in a strategic manner because the eu could could have embraced a more could have embraced a stronger approach to these increasing attacks to human rights defenders. As we know, mm -hmm. this is a trend. And of course, it is, it is very valid to protect asylum seekers' rights. And it, it, it is a very great judgment in that sense. But combining it with a, with a strong stance against these um, attacks to uh, people who, who defend human rights, who do the human rights work, could have made the uh, judgment a, a bit more to the point, if I may say. Mm -hmm. Edel, thank you very much for this amazing conversation. Um, Edel's article uh, about this topic was published in our website. The link is at the description uh, below. And as for the listeners, uh, thank you for joining us. You are more than welcome to leave any comments uh, below or to reach us through our social media. We are on YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, podcast platforms, we literally everywhere. So we are looking forward to meet you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye, Idil. Bye, Christina. Thank you for having me.